previously on Doki Doki Night Nurse. You said so yourself that you have dreams of this happening. Does that mean you want this? Really, Sayori? Gaslighting me? What? I shove Sayori away from me and try to repeatedly slap myself in a desperate attempt to wake up. Wait, that's not what I... You just called me a nightmare. If that's not what you mean, then why did you say it? You want to get away from me because this is a nightmare. That's what you said. Stop twisting my words. What is it going to take for you to understand my feelings, Finn? I know. Oh. What? Is it... Do you really have to do that? Seriously? Right. And I accuse you of being the imposter. That's right. That's freaking right. <laughs> <laughs> she rushes Sayori like a demon with a furious look in her eyes. Sayori holds her bat out. Wait. S Sayori holds her bat out in front of her as she tries to move her way, but she isn't fast enough. What? Did she just stab me? Sayori. Yes? I love you. I love you too, Finn. More than you'll ever know. I should have gone. I should have let you gone in there on your own. I should have gone with you, and I can't help but break myself. I <laughs> feel myself breaking down again. Sayori pulls me in for a warm embrace. He, he gave you a chance to live, Sayori. The gift of life. I think that's the best gift anyone could give someone they love. I, I just wish he could be. Your here right beside me so I could tell him how much I loved him. Oh, okay, uh, third time's the charm. Hopefully this will be it. Hopefully, hopefully, please, please, oh, please, oh, please, Glob. Do not deny her love. Let's just... As much as I hate doing this and all, considering the um, that I went through this pain two times now, hopefully third time's the charm. Let's just lay along and uh, don't break her heart. I'm hoping this is a dream. If it is, then it has to be the strangest one I've ever had. As much as I like going for it to go on, I know it can't. For now, I'll just go with Sayori's wishes. What's the harm in it? She sighs happily as I embrace, return her embrace with one of my own. You're right, Sayori. Even if this is a dream, I hope I'll never wake up from it. <sighs> Thanks, Finn. I knew you'd see things my way. To stroke her ego some more, I reach over to do my best to start stroking her hair. She giggles in delight as she looks passionately into my eyes. We're having such a nice time snuggling together, don't you think? I wish we could just be like this forever. Yeah, we sure are. You don't sound too sure, Finn. What's the matter? If that's- Wait, what? If it's the whole thing about people judging us. No, it's not that. I know it's going to sound stupid, but when you mention how you're a keeper and for being here by my side, taking care of me while I'm sick, I almost wonder if I even deserve you. Oh, come on, Finn. You know, that's... I mean it, Sayori. Honestly, out of all the guys out there in the world, why me? Why would you settle f for some pathetic loser like me? I've heard about how some of those the guys around our school our school talk about you. Guys who would very, could easily, very easily snap me in half if they wanted to. Oh, I... I had no idea guys were talking about me like that. What... What were they saying about me? Mostly just because just how you're super cute and cheerful and how some of them were tempted to ask you out, only to go in favor of some of the popular girls like Monica. They also said a few things about you that I'd rather not repeat. Sayori is blushing furiously as she takes her hand back to momentarily cover her mouth. Oh, wow. Don't you see what I mean? There are hundreds, probably even thousands of guys out there in the world who would love to be your boyfriend. Out of all of them, why did you sell for me? I'm just some 
second-rate student with third-rate looks. What do you mean, why you, Finn? You silly goose. I only ha ever had eyes for you. Even if I had a fountain mountain of guys that wanted to get with me, I'd never be interested in them. Aww, that's sweet, but no. Focus on the mission you're here right now. You already been here two times. You are not going to fall for this again. Especially not when you're already too perfect. I don't know about that. Are you sure we're still talking about me here? Please don't put yourself down like that, Finn. It hurts me inside hearing you talk that way about yourself. You shouldn't look down on yourself or compare yourself to any of the guys out there. None of them are you. Besides, I, you're only seeing what those guys want everyone else to see. For all you know, they might be a bunch of, of huge jerk faces behind closed doors. I wouldn't want to be a, w w with a guy like that. Yeah, I guess you're right. I don't know everything about all of the so-called popular guys in our school. That's right. So please, don't compare yourself to them. You're amazing just the way you are. I've always felt that way about you from the moment we first met. You're exaggerating. No, it's the truth. You know I'd never lied to you about something like this. You're going to have to forgive me, Sayori. It's just... None of this feels real right now. I've spent a long time questioning if I even deserve you, so to have you in my room talking to me like this just has me so overwhelmed. Even though I had depression for so long, I still don't understand why we were able to torture ourselves in this way. You can't help the way you feel about me, Finn, and frankly, neither can I. What? I know you're right, but then... Being in love is nothing to be ashamed of, you know. It's only natural to have those feelings for someone you want to always be with and see happy. I know. I was just so afraid of everything that could go wrong. Well, there's nothing to worry about now. I'm here for you. I always want to be here for you. Not just as your nurse, but as your loving girlfriend. I'm hoping I can make you as happy as you've made me. She sounds so sincere, the way she looks at me. As your nurse, tonight I'm going to be working overtime to make sure you have everything you need to get better. I'll treat you even after the break of dawn. I'll make sure you're not alone. After all, I can't wait just to drive you into a corner and kiss you without a sound. Um, yeah, um... <laughs> You're so easy to tease sometimes, you know. I could say the same thing about you, and also putting my fist into your face. What's that supposed to mean? A true artist never reveals their secrets, Sayori. Again, I yearn for gender equality, so things will be fair, because still... Er, meanie. I rest my case. <laughs> uh... Well then, uh, we already know past this point, so for one last time, King Crimson! Oh, I think, I think maybe I should stop using my, uh, my powers or stand power or whatever. It's really affecting my, uh, my mana or something like that. I don't know, but still, I had to do the right thing because we really do not want to be here all day again. From the sound of things, even if you catch her by surprise, she can still move a lot faster than you. Yeah, exactly. Like, fast as Frick. She's like freaking Sonic or Shadow at this point. Sayura ponders this for a moment, looking between me and Mr. Bat. You might be right. Okay, can you handling... Can you handle finding the other girls on your own, Mio? I'm sure I'll manage. Got it. I close the door as Mio and I step out of the room. After a few minutes, Sayori steps out of the room in some new clothes and her bat in hand. You take care of yourself out there, Tukoto. That goes double for you, Sayori. Kota has self-defense training to take care of herself, but I can't say the same for you. 
As long as we work together, I'm sure we can take her on easily. Yeah, that's right with the power of friendship and teamwork. That's the right attitude to have. All right, let's move out. Mio gives an affirmative, affirmative nod as she proceeds down the hallway. Sayori and I f f make our way downstairs to begin a rendezvous with the false Sayori. Oh ho ho, I really, I really pray and hope to Golb, Golb, Golob, and Glob, and the heavens, or in the, um, or well, yeah, in the heavens that this will be the right one. Oh! It seems that this is some sort of a, uh, flashback or whatever. Okay. And Thing Glob, Thing Glob, it's Red Bow Sayori, the real one. Ugh. I just, I just cannot stand Imposter Sayori anymore. She has got to go. Can I ask you something? No. Mini, you don't even know what I'm going to ask you. That's where you're wrong, my dear Sayori. I surmise that because it's lunchtime, you have no lunch on your person whatsoever, and you're here with that pleading look on your face. I deduced only one possibility. You want food for the snack machine because you have no food or money. Hey, I resent that kind of treatment. Am I wrong though? <laughs> oh my glob, this guy. Well, no. I still resent that kind of treatment though. Then I rest my case. Sayori sticks her tongue out at me as I make my way to the club room for lunch. It's not my fault the truth hurts. Come on, Finn. Please? You need to realize there are consequences for your actions. Are you seriously not going to help me? You got it. That's not fair. All, f all is fair in love and war. <laughs> I really hope Kaguya-sama is here, obviously. Love? It's an expression. I'm... Not too sure on what it means, but the point is I'm not going to hold back just because we're best friends. Oh, alright. What? Oh, nothing. It's just... Uh, what am I looking at? Hmm. Hmm. Don't you guys have any weird ideas, alright? Sayori, so you need to make sure you look presentable enough. Oh yeah, because of course, she looks messy. What? Seriously, look at your collar. What about your necktie? I think you should focus less on food and more on making sure you don't look so sloppy. I stop and begin trying to fix Sayori's collar and her necktie. Sometimes I wonder what she would do if I wasn't around to point these things out to her. It's a shame since people are going to think badly about you. Like I said before, it's no wonder you don't have a boyfriend yet. Wow, of course, dense as f MC. Hey, no need to get so personal, Finn. Besides, there's only one guy I want to notice me. What was that? Sayori pauses as she notices how close we are. Her cheeks redden as she turns away from me just a bit. I stop fixing her collar as I try to figure out what's going on. Nothing. Nothing at all. It's just me being Sayori, that's all. Come on, don't be like that. Okay, look, I'm sorry I went too far with that boyfriend comment, but I get where I'm coming from, right? It's going to be hard to meet a decent guy who is going to treat you right if you scare them all away with your disheveled, disheveled clothes and messy hair. Someone who can look out for you properly and get to know you. Someone a lot better than I am, that's for sure. I wish I could be that guy for you, Sayori, but you deserve better. Well, I already know who it is. Me. You shouldn't have to settle for some loser like me. Sorry, I guess. I didn't mean to get all sentimental there. You do know I worried about you, right? I do know- I know you do, and I'm glad I have someone who cares so much about me. Hmm. We continue going to the club room with this awkward silence in the air. Sayori breaks that silence after a while. 
You know, you and I were pretty close right when you were messing with my collar. Uh, well, I mean, I kind of get how to get close. I can't fix your collar when I'm 10 feet away from you. I know that, silly. I mean, I felt like you were a lot closer to me when you usually are when you do that kind of stuff. We both stop as I try to come try to keep myself composed. Um wait, I mean What's wrong? Wait, I know what's happening. You're trying to hide something from me. What? Where are you getting that from? Are you sure you're not the one hiding from me? No, I don't. I'm not hiding anything, I swear. Sayori. You do realize you hid your depression from me for the longest time, right? I don't want to ignore you again. I was so scared out of my mind that day. I know, I just... It was a lapse in judgment, that's all. It won't hap It won't ever happen again. I just... Say what you want to say. You can trust me, Sayori. At least, I want you to trust me. Well... This is just a stupid question I've had on my mind. I just wondered to myself how stupid it would be, it would be if you were too were interested in me and... Stupid? Is that? I don't know why she's thinking about us being together, but... Does she think it's stupid? Does she... Does she not want me as her boyfriend that badly? Hey, what's wrong? What? Um... Nothing. Nothing's wrong. You look kind of disappointed there. Me? No, that's just crazy. Get out of here, you crazy. Maybe I should have said that. Maybe I shouldn't use that word. I don't know why those words hurt me so deeply. I mean, I already accepted she would never go for a guy like me, but to hear her say that to me. I mean, I'm not even confessing my love to her, but she's already shooting me down here. I back away from her, turn around and resume walking. Finn, wait! I'm sorry, that didn't come out right, and... Please, I... Please, I do like it when you look out for me and fix my hair and my collar and... It's fine, Sayori. You don't have anything to be sorry for. Come on, don't look at me like that. You're only looking out for me because you care so much about me. I'm the, just the one that made it all awkward. I should probably stop talking now. Sayori, no, I don't want you to stop talking. If anything, I want you to talk more and not hide your feelings so much from me. It's that kind of thinking that almost took you away from me and I just couldn't forgive myself if I didn't give you the proper attention, you know? Can I ask you something? Depends on what you're going to ask me. Why did you look sad earlier? I wasn't sad or disappointed. Let's just drop it. When I said it'd be stupid if you were to me, you look sad. Please, let me just drop it. Well, okay. I just don't want to be the reason you're feeling sad, that's all. I don't want to make you sad with any of my silly random thoughts. You, Sayori. If anything, I can never be sad around you, so there's nothing to worry about. Now, let's just keep going. The others are probably waiting for us. If you're lucky, maybe Natsuki has another cookie you can steal from her. I resent that. The truth hurts sometimes, Sayori. Although maybe not as much as it hurts to be in love with someone you can never have. Hmm. <gasps> what was that? I look around a bit confused. Oh, it was just a dream. I nearly thought that was a, l a flashback and all, but the dream? Okay. That dream. I remember that day. Why was I thinking about it, though? Oh, wait, that's right. I guess the truth does hurt, doesn't it? I guess I fell asleep after Sayori forced me to cuddle, cuddle up with her. I look around and she's nowhere in sight. I got out of bed and stretch a bit. I'm feeling a lot better now, surprisingly enough. So the idea of you and me being a couple is stupid? What's with the sudden 180 out of the blue, Sayori? 
I go downstairs in the hopes of blowing off some steam. I'm surprised I don't hear anything going on. Sayori doesn't seem to be around here. Maybe she's in the bathroom. Well, I know I'm supposed to stay in bed, but I'm feeling a lot better now compared to this morning. I'm not sure how, but then again, I don't know how I got sick within a day either. I walk up to the door, looking over to my shoulder as I do so. I get up, I get my shoes on, and put my hand on the doorknob. It's unlocked. As I turn the doorknob, I sense a sensation of paper cut in my fingers. Gah. What? Upon further inspection, I see a thin wire covering the doorknob. Did she? Did she seriously set a trap for me? Why would she do that? I was so caught up in the moment that I didn't even notice the trap. I can't believe Sayori would be capable of doing that. That's not her. What am I telling you? My blood turns it to ice when I hear a familiar voice behind me. Finn? Uh, hello, Sayori. What do you have there behind your back? Where are you going? Sayori? You need to rest in bed, Finn. You're not feeling well. I turn to face Sayori with a comfortable smile plastered on her face and a, with a hand behind her back. Her voice is kind, yet her words sound threatening. Don't worry, Finn. Nurse Sayori is going to take extra good care of you. I promise. After all, I love you so much. Why did you rig the door, Sayori? I had to take extra precautions, just in case. In case of what? You know you can't leave. We can't have you going all over the place. You need proper rest and relaxation to get better. This isn't funny, Sayori. You're seriously starting to scare me. Hey, you know what? Since you're already down here, why don't we enjoy dinner now? I just finished and it's ready for you. You'll eat it, right? She moves her other hand away from her back, revealing a... knife. My eyes are darting around the room, trying to look for some way out. No luck. I get a jolt of realization when she mentions the food. Wait, the soup from yesterday? All right, the soup. I only started feeling bad after I had some of the tomato soup. What did you put in there, Sayori? Did you seriously drug me with something? Of course, of course, I freaking knew it. It was some sort of a drug or laxative or anything like that. What are you talking about, Finn? I made that soup with all the love I can give you. And I'm pretty sure you know I would never do something like that. And how did I get sick out of nowhere? I don't know. Then, how about you explain to me what I was doing in the basement the other day? Or what? Are you going to tell me that you don't know anything about that either? Sayori remains silent, trying not to look at my face. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. As if you're not the Sayori I've known in all my life. Now you're just being plain silly. And why are you acting so strange out of nowhere? Because she is! Maybe I just decided to stop waiting on the sidelines while you'd shut up the other girls. Did you think about that? Ugh. You know what? I don't have to keep listening to you. I'll be back when you decide to go back to normal. I turn around, once again faced with the rigged doorknob. I end up f trying to force the door open, doing my best to ignore the pain searing through my hand. As I get it open, Sayori shoves me out of the way and blocks the door with her arms spread out. Why don't you just leave me alone? This isn't your house. It's mine. I worked so hard to get our food ready, Finn. And then what? You're going to food poison me again? F*** you. I made it just for you. I filled it with all the love I can give you. I can take care of you if you don't listen to me. Why are you trying to get away? Why won't you eat my delicious food? The chicken soup might have been okay and the salmon meal was appetizing, but how do I know you don't didn't do anything to this food as well? How could you say that? Hello? I hold up the hand I held the door with, riddled with many cuts. With my good hand, I point to the door. She looks to the doorknob over at her side. Then I point to the knife at her hand. Would a sane person go waving a knife around at someone they love? Only if they were misbehaving like you are right now. I need this for protection too. Uh-huh. Now tell me, what kind of sane person rigs a door with a barbed wire? 
someone who hasn't someone who has something they want to keep safe from the world besides i can't have you talking to other women finn not when you already have the perfect loving girlfriend waiting for you at home this isn't keeping me safe sayori you know you sounded a lot more confident about our love now you're worried i'm going to look at other women that doesn't sound like you have much faith in me this is no way to start a healthy relationship you're my treasure, Finn. Anyone could just waltz right in and try to steal you away from me. Besides, would anyone else know about all the memories we shared? Maybe not, but from the moment I ran into you the other morning, I could feel something was wrong about you. You're talking about nonsense. Maybe it's nonsense to you, but the Sayori I know gives off a warm, welcoming aura that makes you want to be around her. You, on the other hand? You give off an aura that feels so cold, evil even. I am Sayori. You're an imposter. That's what you are. Ha! Ah, that's right. You finally realized it. I am so proud of you right now, me. No, you're wrong. I don't know who you are, but it's time to give it up. As I try to wrestle the knife out of her hands, we are both caught off guard by the sound of the door swinging open and someone with a flame bat. Oh! The fake Sayori, who was still trying to block the door, ended up getting slammed to the wall. Get away from me! <laughs> Get away from me! Ah, uh, even though I time-traveled three times now, this never gets old because, come on, she's just so adorable! <laughs> I'm not going crazy and I'll hurt you! Sayori? Is that you? Finn, you're okay! Well, mostly. I hold up my bad hand. As I move closer to each other, a familiar voice rings out behind the door. So, looks like we meet again. The jig is up. You're not the real Sayori. Get away from her, Finn. She kidnapped me and the other girl so she could have you all to herself. Imposter. I should have known better than to show you mercy. You can have him. Finn is my life, my world. You're not taking him from me. Oh, give it a break already. You've lost. You know who she is, Sayori? And yes, you lost because I went back in time to do this. And now it's finally over. Cannot wait to freaking punch you in the face, you, you, you fake bitch. No time to explain right now. Just know that this skunk bag showed up in my room two days ago and locked me in my closet. Your room? You mean my room? You're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. Don't listen to her, Finn. She's just trying to confuse you. I know that you. I know that you know which one of us is the real Sayori. View. Prove that for you. She's broken right now. And Kotonoha to the rescue. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Detective. As she prepares to rush at me, the door slams open and a pair of arms reach out and restrain her. She drops the knife and as she tries to break free. Oh, I don't think so. Goto, what kept you? You said you run in right after me. Yes, but I was only going to when the right opportunity presented itself. Let go of me. Get off. Goto quickly slides the knife away from the imposter Sayori right at my feet. I pick it up as Sayori holds up her bat. You are my hero, Finn. I was never your hero to begin with, Faker. Ever since the day, first day we met, when you saved me from those bullies in the park. Those mean boys wouldn't leave me alone until you came along. I didn't have any friends, but you promised to look out for me after that. Do you know how much that meant to me? How did you know about that? That was between me and Finn. No, no more gaslighting me, Faker. I don't know who the heck you are, but you're insane. The real Sayori would never trap me in my own house or abduct her friends. Your time is up and the writing and on the wall is oh, oh and the writing is on the wall for you. Face it, you're nowhere to run, so might as well stop living in your little fantasy world. No, it's not over. You're wrong. She shoves herself into the back of the door, causing Kotonaha's head to slam into it. She inadvertently releases her. She rushes, she rushes at me again, knocking Sayori to the floor and causing her to hit her head. She then grabs me by my collar with her good arm. Please let me go. 
please. Uh, guys, I need an adult. I literally need an adult right now. I am not safe. <laughs> but still, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do this right. She slammed me against the wall. She got, she's got me, and I, and she knows it. She keeps a firm grip on my shirt, holding on much tighter now. I end up dropping the knife as she slams me again. And so it hurts so much, Finn. That's how much I love you. So much that it hurts inside in ways you can't imagine. It's like torture. I'm in agony. Her voice starts trembling and her eyes begin to water. To be with you like this, to be able to drive you into a corner and kiss you without a sound, it's like a dream come true to me. No! F off! I swear to Glob. Hey, what are you doing? You and I belong together, Finn. I can't bear the thought of losing you. Stop resisting, Finn. Now a little less conversation, a little more. That's not what it means to be in love. We both look to see that Sayori has gotten back up from the floor and seemingly recovered from hitting her head. It's about having mutual trust and understanding. It's about communication. It's about sharing and compromising. It's also about showering your special person with love and affection, not being so cruel and hurting them. Would you just shut up already? Best love is that is the kind that awakens the soul and makes us reach for more. The love that plants the fire in our hearts and brings peace to our minds. That's fortune cookie nonsense. The real Sayori is the one of the kindest people I've ever met. She can make friends with strangers. She spreads happiness wherever she goes. She's always there for her friends. She's the most unselfish person there is, unlike you. Sayori is the most pr beautiful girl I've known, both physically and spiritually. That's something I can never say about you, faker. Finn, you mean that? Of course I do. Th thank you. Sayori smiles, tears rolling down her cheeks. The imposter Sayori roars with anger, slamming me against the wall again. Heh. <laughs> Funny. The fact that you were so worried about me looking at other women is enough to make me question you, faker. As Sayori said, it's about trusting your partner. We trust each other more than anyone else in the world. You and I don't have the same level of trust, do we? Sorry to say, but it just wouldn't work out between us. I am Sayori. Tch. Yeah, and I'm Ring Bing Carlos. That's why. That's why I love Sayori. She understands me, and I understand her. She's one of the most important people in my life, and you can't ever replace her, no matter how hard you try. Of course, there could be only one. You might look, you might look and sound like her, but you'll never have her kind, loving heart. Finn, you, you. I won't let you take him away from me. As the imposter Sayori stares daggers at her, Sayori braces herself with her bat. As it looks like she's about to rush over and swing at her, she suddenly closes with a pauses with a confused look on her face before closing her eyes. The imposter Sayori and I exchange looks of confusion before Sayori speaks again, not opening her eyes. No, I don't need to worry about you. You're just a rain clouds in my head, just given a body. I'm not feeling those rain clouds right now. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about right now, Sayori. You just wanted to take ca good care. You just wanted to take care of your rain clouds out of your misery, huh? So you don't have any power over me. You're not real. The imposter Sayori drops me and picks up the knife I dropped. She puts a foot to my chest from keep me from moving. That's fortune cookie nonsense. I am Sayori. I am real. Sayori, watch out! The fake Sayori releases me and takes off like a demon possessed. What? Whoa! Whoa! Just as the imposter closes in on her, Sayori opens her eyes and jabs her fist at her. I'm amazed when the imposter vanishes into black smoke, the knife clinging to the floor and her discarded clothes falling right after it. Uh... Sayori? Did you know that would destroy her? No. Then how did you know to do that? I'm... I'm not too sure. 
maybe, maybe she has, you know, the power, the force, something. I don't know. Part of it was from you building up my confidence, and then I heard a voice. Voice? Yeah. He sounded very kind and wise, and kind of old. He almost sounded like my dad. Um, okay. Maybe hopefully it ain't Obi-Wan Kenobi, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, maybe that old saying of, if you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you could uh, possibly, possibly imagine. <laughs> I'm sorry for starting because, man, I am so tired of time traveling and, and I'm really hungry. So maybe after this, I'm going to go back to my time and have some, have some food. So uh, um, we're almost there, I think, fellow knights. Hopefully, hopefully. So then, what did this guy tell you? He told me I have no reason to be afraid. He told me to let go. Then he said that I know what to do next to make sure that skunk bag would ever hurt you. I kind of figured she was made up of all the bad thing, bad parts of me, and if I let go of that neg negativity, things would be fine. I'd figured she'd be super weak if she ran into my fist, but didn't think it would make her go away. Lucky break, I guess. By the way, where have you been all this time? What exactly happened, anyway? Well, hmm, where do I begin? We are both caught off guard as we hear Kotonoha laugh to herself as she picks herself up. It's quite the story. Let me warn you right now, Finn. As we go over to the sofas, I hear the door open once more. This time, Mio and the rest of the larger club girls come pouring in. Yori? Where are you? Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Sayori, where are you? He got some nerve. Natsuki, I already told you it wasn't her. We gotta admit, that's kind of hard to believe though, right? Maybe so. Guys, there you are. What was the deal with kidnapping us? That wasn't me, Natsuki. I can vouch for her. I saw and even held back the real perpetrator myself. I know it sounds outrageous, but it's the truth. I can for sure vouch for them both. Not to mention that Fake Sayori has me under house arrest for the last few days. Fake Sayori? Yeah, you got to trust me on this. See? Look on the floor. Did you see the blue bow she was wearing? Uh, so what? You just got naked in front of MC and changed clothes? Natsuki, you... You little... I'm gonna let that slide for now just for once. No! Natsuki, now isn't the time for that kind of humor. Well, even though she might be sneaky right now, but we all kind of need it sometimes because... Oh, I, I'm sure things are about to be okay now, hopefully. If I may ask, where's the perpetrator now? If these discarded clothes were what she was wearing, does that mean she's... Actually, Sayori took care of her all on her own. Sayori? She took care of that imposter on her own? Yuri looks over to Kotonoha, which gives her a solemn nod. I'm not sure what that's all about, so I'll just leave it between them. Anyway, now that everyone is here, perhaps it would be the best time to tell everyone what more or less happened. Good idea. We all sit down in the living room as Sayori and Koto begin begins explaining things. Koto heard this story before from Sayori right before she and Mio rescued her. At face value, her story sounds like something out of a weird science fiction story, but after meeting but after meeting and dealing with the fake Sayori firsthand, as preposterous as it all sounds, there's no other way to come to explain it. Even then, how else could you can you explain having two Sayoris at the same time? Flu <laughs> a few explanations later. <laughs> I had to, um, the, and also Killen. Uh, I'm sorry if I uh, if I did that, but still, I had to. I had to. Let's get this straight. So then, it was just some dark and evil version of you. Well, kind of. 
a dark and evil version of you who so happened to get this crazy idea of kidnapping us, locking us in your parents' room, and having her wave at Finn? I'm sorry, Natsuki. Really? I don't know how she got here, but I got kidnapped. But to, to you, do you know? Hmm. If I didn't know any better, I would say this sounded like the plot of a book I read a long time ago. The power to give life to your demons. That would be the most unpleasant to say the least. Demons? Oh, I really hope that ain't the case for sure. I know it sounds outlandish, but it's the truth. I only heard half the story and I didn't get to see both Sayoris in the same room. But I trust Kato and Sayori. They would never lie to us. We met... We both met the false Sayori just before we rescued you all, however. There are so... There are things in this world that can't be explained. I agree, Yuri. I really agree. That goes for the strange occurrences like this as well. In this case, the truth is stranger than fiction. Alright, fine. As much as I don't believe in this hocus pocus stuff, I guess I don't have any other choice but to believe you. I suppose there are times where you have have to suspend realistic expectations to fully understand something. Right. Kira and I could tell you all about some of the weird things that have happened to us, but that is the best left for another time. Well, now that we have all that sorted, I guess we should go back to our homes. I imagine our families are worried sick about us. Maybe, although you seem to forget I'm by myself right now, as my mom is overseas. Oh, I'm sorry Yuri. Yeah, I doubt my dad would even notice I was missing. Well, meanwhile my parents have been on some crazy business trip for what feels like forever. At least I don't have to explain this to them. Okay, I get it. Anyway, I think it's best we just head home and rest. I'm just glad we all made it out of this okay. Same. Except for my hand and all. And of course, my tired voice. And I'm hungry, and I need to go back to my time as well, so, uh... Ah, sorry, that happened to you. Well, mostly okay, at least. How did that happen? Well, the fake Sayori rigged the door so that no one inside could ever leave with a barbed wire. Oh my glob, are you okay? I'm fine now, thanks to Sayori. Thank goodness. Well then, all well that ends well. Yeah, verily. Yeah. I'm more fatty and all the chunk, all the chunk, armor fatty. Oh, you sneaky little! <laughs> oh man, I mean, that's the DDLC community for you, poking fun at, at other fan mods as well. Oh my dear glob man. <laughs> now then. I've gone ahead and texted my father. I know I'm going to get an earful from him, but he's offered to give you a ride if you need it. Oh, thank Glob. Walking around at night alone gives me the creeps like you wouldn't believe. It doesn't help I live that so far away. I feel the same, any same way, especially when you hear all these awful stories. Ugh, don't even remind me. While I don't feel as afraid to walk around at night on my own, I would rather not have to walk so far either. Unless your father is driving an SUV, I guess that doesn't leave much room for me then. Unfortunately, he does not. Tell me, Monica, how far are you from here? Not too far. Sayori, Finn, and I are practically neighbors. What? You live in the same neighborhood as me and Sayori? Okay, but at least in this mod. I'm about a five minute walk away. Alright. You three can go ahead with my father and he'll drop you off at your home. Meanwhile, I'll walk Monica home before heading home myself. No, we, no need to worry, Kato. I wouldn't want you to go out of your way for me. I'm doing this because I want to, not because I have to. Besides, Mio and Natsuki still make a valid point. <laughs> Natsuki, why do you keep bouncing? After what we've dealt with today, I guess we can add love crazed wild dumber doppelgangers to the mix. Oh, well, thank you, Kota. That's awfully kind of you. It's not too it's not long before a car pulls up to my house. Natsuki, Yuri, and Mio bid bid us farewell as they get into the car. After it drives off, Kota Noha leads Monica outside to and the two wish us a good night and go on her way. 
<laughs> Woo! What a crazy last few days this has been, right, Sayori? You could see that again. Ugh. What a crazy few days has been, right, Sayori? Sayori gives me a sarcastic smirk as she sh playfully shoves me. We exchange a quick laugh with each other. It's that moment that I realize something. That's weird. What's weird? You know how I got sick after I had the tomato soup? I'm feeling a lot better now. That's great news. That's kind of strange though. I still can't believe she got you sick though. For a closet maniac, she surprisingly took good care of me. If we ignore the part where she pulled a knife out on me and put a barbed wire on the door that I saw too late and kidnapped all of you and kept you hostage. When she kept, <laughs> when she started losing her mind and seducing me. Yeah, I guess you could say she took good care of me. Upon hearing this, Sayori oddly falls silent. But hey, at least with the uh, with the uh, with the faker gone, we have the real Sayori right here as our real personal healthcare companion. Whew. But yes, and of course, still cuter than Baymax. I can feel the awkward tension in the air. Sayori, what's the matter? Finn, earlier when you were up against the other me, all those things you said, did you? Did you mean them? Every single one. Even the part where you said you loved me? I feel my blood turn to ice when she asks me that. I... I nearly forgot I said that. I was almost hoping she would forget about it too. I clench my hands on my lap. Well? You already went and said it, Finn. There's no going back now. Backtracking on this would only make things worse on you. Yes, Sayori. I... I love you. Her face lights up like you can imagine when, he, she, when she hears this. So, you weren't lying when you said? Not at all. Everything you said was the truth. I guess... I guess I... I, I, I just kind of caught up in the moment back there and I blurted, at, blurted it out, so... <laughs> You're so clueless sometimes, but I think that's what makes you so cute sometimes. Well, huh? Hmm? Nothing. It's just that the other you said the same thing. Oh, well, she was the other me after all. Considering she was the other you, though, she did tell me a few time a few things. Uh, oh. If her feelings are anything to go off, then... Yeah. The other day, though, when you said that me liking you was stupid? No, that was just... I don't know. I just started feeling bad when I saw you spending a lot of time with Monica and I didn't think you were interested in me, so I blurted out that light so I just blurted that out like nothing. I wasn't completely honest with you, Finn. I put a hand on Sayori's shoulder and then I pull her into a warm embrace. She lets out a soft gasp as I hold to her. It's not like Monica was forwarding with me or anything, Sayori. She just said she wanted to make me feel like I feel more at home while I'm at the club. Sayori pulls away from my hug, lo looking rather hesitant. She could be... Even she was flirting with me, I always had eyes for you. Last time I checked, Monica isn't you. No one could ever replace you. Not even some evil clone that looks like you. I want to tell you something, Finn. Just remember, it's me and my random thoughts. I'm always going to be me. I might stumble on my words or be clumsy, but I could never lie or do anything to hurt you. I know, Sayori. Thank you, Finn. You do know how to brighten my darkest... You, you do know how to brighten up my darkest days. And you are like the light of my life. Whenever I'm feeling down or sad, you're always there to make me smile again. You've always... You've been there for me ever since we were little. I wish I could repay you for everything you've done. Oh, come on, Finn. I didn't do anything special. That's where you're wrong, Sayori. You've done more for me than you, could, you might ever know. Well, in that case, we're even. Hmm? You already repaid me and then some. Just this being, just being this sweet, loving guy who's always looking out for me is already enough for me. I only want to make sure you're happy and safe. 
I don't even want to imagine what would have happened that day during the festival. I'm sorry, Finn. I just... I wasn't thinking. I had a lapse in judgment and, well, luckily you saved me in time. That proves my point that you're already doing a good job of looking out for me and keeping me safe. Well, yeah, I mean... Even if I did just blurt it out, I mean it. I love you, Sayori. I just don't want to lose you. Never again. You're amazing, you know. Sometimes I think you're too good to be true. I just... I just figured you deserved better than some no-life loser like me. Ben, I don't want to hear you talk about bad... I don't want to hear you talk bad about yourself like that. Shame on you. Sayori gets all pouty and lightly slaps my shoulder. Okay, okay, no need to get all cute and grumpy on me. Hey, I really mean it, you know. I don't care what anyone thinks about you. They don't know the way I do. It's like, ever since the day we met, you've always been there to get me, bad, get me out of a bad situation. I mean, you scared away those bullies at the park when they stole my doll and made me cry. Yeah, I still can't stand people like that. Of course, it's like my grandma put it once. Some people are just idiots who don't know what to do with their free time. Exactly. They should, they really need to see to see a psychiatrist or a therapy or whatever whatever that makes them you know not make people feel bad about themselves and stuff and wasting their time on it like seriously still though I didn't like them I didn't like seeing them pick on you back then I didn't know why but I think I understand now oh so even as a little boy you had a crush on me. I feel my cheeks grow warm. <laughs> Don't worry. Some of the girls from back when we were kids used to tease me on about how much time we spent together. Momoko even started saying you were you and me are going to get married and she was going to tell everyone. So I just kept quiet about it. In the future, in the future. Oh, right. Them. They were pretty mean, that's for sure. Then again, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't realize what these feelings I had for you meant. So you're saying they did something good for once? <laughs> I guess so. Well, Destiny and Momoko aren't here. It's only you and me. We can finally be honest about the way we feel about each other. Sayori takes my hand, intertwining her fingers with mine. That's all I've ever wanted. She lets go of my hand, only to surprise me with a hug. Sayori sighs happily and giggles to herself. What is it? It's like we fit together. Um, what? Oh, not in a weird way, more like in a physical way. <laughs> well, I mean not too physical, I mean like regular physical. Eh, why your words are so confusing? Yep, especially with you people out there thinking about strange things. Please stop and get some help. Don't worry, I get what you mean, I think. Sayori pulls away from me slightly and looks deeply into my eyes. I missed you, like a whole lot. I used to see you every day since we met and all the way to most of our high school years. Then, poof, half a year went by and it got harder every day being alone without you around. Right. I'm so sorry about that, Sayori. I don't know what was wrong with me. Right after my parents divorced, I just, I just pulled away from everyone. I didn't realize I ended up hurting you in the process until it was almost too late. It's not your fault, Finn. I just, the days just got harder and harder, all because I wasn't with you. I missed the time we spent together, Finn. I, I'm in love with you. I mean it. Can't you see? I can survive without you. I'm not going to leave you again, Sayori. You have my word. I don't want to lose you. Ever. <laughs> wow. My heart is beating so fast right now. I waited so long to be here in your arms, Finn. To feel your warmth. To feel your arms wrapped around me to keep safe. <laughs> what is it? I just thought of something I need to tell you myself. You have something to tell me? Like what? I'm going to need you to be a little closer for that. We're already pretty close, Finn. Any closer and we might as well be kissing. 
<laughs> Tier 2. Come on, just go along with it. Well, okay. Sayori gets close as she possibly can to me. I put my lips to hers. It feels as though time stops for us at that moment. We pull away after it feels like an eternity. That was unexpected. Uh, oh. I'm... Dang it. I always screw everything up. I let her go and start to back away. Where are you going? You hated it, didn't you? No, that's not what I meant. I know it's... I said it was unexpected, but I didn't mean it was unwanted. Oh. You need to stop thinking so badly about yourself, Finn. I love you and you deserve to be loved. Always remember that. I take Sayori up in my arms, gently lifting her as we do a little twirl around the living room. Face it, tiger. You hit the jackpot. Must be the luckiest guy alive then. Oh, hearing that from the real Sayori makes me feel safe now. As I gently put Sayori down, she gives me a small laugh. What is it? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Um, I'm caught off when Sayori puts her lips to mine. That's for surprising me earlier. Okay, okay. We're even now. I gently boop her on the nose and make my way over to the sofa. Hey, get back here. Sayori runs over to the sofa to join me, proceeding to cuddle up with me. Having her with me, having sh shared these wonderful moments just now, really is like a dream come true. Yeah, if this was a dream, I would never want to wake up if it meant I would, I could be happy in love with my best friend. She means more to me than she might ever know and I intend to be there for her. Always. And I really hope that at all... <laughs> It all well and ends well, I suppose. Hello again, Tarankos. Or Tarankos, I don't know how to pronounce your name. So, it would seem that Dark Puppet was a failure after all. Even after I bestowed the knowledge of the perfect virus to in incipic. In I don't know how to say that, incapacitate him, she would not, she could not su succeed. Quite a shame. I had high hopes for it, but I suppose I will have to construct a new strategy. Perhaps it was not worth wasting time giving life to the girl's darkness in her heart. Or perhaps I need someone with more darkness in her heart. Yes. That puppet was nothing but a worthless creation. It failed because it was too weak. I must find someone with more darkness into their heart. Still, though, I felt a presence surrounding that girl at the last moment. A presence I haven't felt since... Impossible. No, I will not let you interfere with my plans. Oh, just wait and see, you... Articus? Okay. When there is shadow, there must also be light. Without chaos, we cannot have order. These are the fundamental truths in life. While one cannot banish the darkness within themselves, it is possible to keep it at bay and not to give in to it. We must not give any power to these thoughts. We must not act on them. In doing so, those thoughts remain my only thoughts. Learning such mental discipline is not easy and will take much time, but it is possible. This girl has a bright future ahead of her. Sadly, I cannot say the same about my brother. Love is something so fragile and easily tainted. Love can be painful at times, but it can also be very rewarding. The best love is the kind that awakens the soul and makes us reach for more. The love that plants the fire in our hearts and brings peace to our minds. Well said, Articus. Well said. True and Paradiso. Or Paradisio. Coding Mr. Rocket Man and RDS Shadow. Man, you guys really outdid yourselves with this one. My glob, man. Well then, um, finally, for the third time ever, I did the right thing, and it's all thanks to this watch right here. You know what? Let me just lay down for a for a second here and just, you know. 
talk about this mod for a little bit. Um, it's really good. And it's not going to be a review or anything because that would be a story for another day. But uh, if you guys want me to, uh, to review it, let me know in the comments down below and also join my Discord server if you haven't already because, of course, uh, uh, votes will be casted there as well. So, uh, yeah, wink wink. Um, <laughs> Ardeath Shadow and Mr. Rocket Man, you really outdid yourselves. And um, I, I take back what I said. I, I definitely messed up, really. And that I cannot believe I just dated an imposter. Oh man, but uh, I guess there's nothing else left for me to say, so uh, oh. since I'm from the future, I'm still going to say this anyway, so uh, I hope you guys enjoy watching this as much as I do, and uh, if you want to give it a replay, go ahead, it'll be right here, or there, right there. <laughs> Sorry about that, I was pointing in the wrong direction. So, uh, <laughs> uh, if you guys enjoy what you're watching and like what you're seeing, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe if you haven't already. It'll help me a huge bunch in making more content like this. And click on the bell notification to be notified. And if you want to play this mod for yourself, as always, link in the description below. And with that being said, thank you guys all so much for watching. Finn the Dark Knight signing off, and I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay awesome and have fun, fellow knights and adventurers. What the? What? Time to go. Okay.